What's up booktube? Welcome back. My name is Laura if you're new here and today we're talking about every book that I read in January. Y'all, I did so much reading in January. I think this was my best reading event that I've had like ever possibly? I'm not really sure, but in a very long time at the very least. So there was a reason why I read so much this month and why it'll probably never happen again. I got sick around like the middle of the month or so. I had tonsillitis, but because of the thing that shall not be named right now because I don't want my video to get flagged and then not get views as a result of the algorithm. But you know, that thing that's going on in the world in Ontario, you can't actually get tested right now unless you're part of like very specific groups. So if you have any kind of illness of any sort, even if you're a thousand percent positive that it's not the thing, we're just supposed to assume that any illness is a positive for the thing and we're just not allowed to go to work for a week. So that's what happened. I had tonsillitis. I know it was tonsillitis. I did not have the thing, but I still couldn't go to work for an entire week, which I was not happy about. Like obviously the safety of my coworkers is more important. So like just in case I understand why they had me stay home. But either way, I was home for an entire week. So I did a lot of reading <laughs> and like my head hurt so much that I couldn't watch Netflix. I just couldn't have noise. So I was literally just reading for the entire friggin' week. So it was awesome. So yeah, this is very much a like one-off. It's never gonna happen again, but I'm very happy that it happened at least for this month because it had my reading year start off in a fantastic way. So for January, I read 13 books, which was a whopping 3,000 53 pages. I know for many people on book two that's not that much. That's like a pretty average amount for them. But for me, that's like double the amount that I would normally read. So I'm very proud of myself. But with that said, we are going to be here for a while. I'm hoping I'll be able to edit this video down to like a more manageable time, but I'm going to be filming probably for at least a solid hour. So get ready. Let's go. I'm gonna stop rambling now. <laughs> so the first book that I read in January was The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This is book two in the Winter Night Trilogy. I finally read this freaking book, guys. Oh my god. I've been wanting to read the sequel for about two years now. Finally did it. And I'm so glad that I did. I loved this book. I gave it four stars. It was fantastic. The Winter Night Trilogy, if you don't know, is a Russian-inspired historical fantasy that takes place, I don't know exactly what year, but it's on the cusp of when Christianity was taking over the world, basically. And I felt our main character named Vasilisa. This is a, like, coming-of-age fantasy story for her. So it starts when she's a very young kid and we watch her grow up. But Vasilisa is excited. She's able to see the old gods of, like, Russian folklore and she's friends with them. She leaves some tributes. And this series is basically just her navigating her life as a woman during this time period who's also able to see gods. So in the first book, because of Christianity taking over, all these old gods start to disappear because they're, because they're no longer being honored. And so Vasilisa has to save her people from being attacked by some like evil forest spirit thing and then things kind of go from there. I love this series. It's so atmospheric and beautifully written. Like honest to god, the writing is some of the most beautiful writing that I've ever read in my life. It's so so beautiful. This is the perfect series to read during the winter time. It's just it's so cold and snowy. It is truly stunning and I just can't get enough of this series. I want to read book three like right now, especially after the ending of this book. What the fuck? I need it. I need book three right now. My one not quite critique because it's more of just a personal preference is that it, it is quite slow paced at first. I really don't have the patience to like sit and wait for the plot to kick in. I, I want the action like immediately and this one definitely gets there but it does take a while so I was a little bit bored for the first little while but like I love the character so much that I, that I didn't even mind. I can't really go into details of what happened in this book because it would spoil book one but I loved what happened with Vesta's character in this one and kind of her whole journey that is like right up my alley. I love that trope. So I had a great time with book two. The next book that I read was Love After the End edited by Joshua Whitehead. This is an anthology of two-spirit and indigenous queer speculative fiction. Apparently I don't know what speculative fiction is because like to me this is just sci-fi. Is that it? Is it just sci-fi? I don't really know what the difference is. I thought speculative fiction was like literary fiction so I wasn't sure if, if I was going to like this one but it turns out it was just dystopian sci-fi. 
Um, so I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, apparently just have no clue what that genre actually means, so I'm trying to figure that out. But anyways, um, this was a really beautiful collection of short stories. All these stories are set like way in the future, and they look at what our future might look like in this like dystopian society from the perspective of queer indigenous people. So I can't really go over like each individual story because I would take way too long, but they were all so fascinating. There were of course a few that I didn't like as much as other ones. That's always going to happen with any kind of anthology series, but overall these were all all really solid reads and I would recommend all of them. I think they were all saying something very important and um, just really beautifully written as well. The storytelling aspect and just like the way that it flows was a huge part of this anthology and that really really came through. It was beautiful to read even while reading all these like really terrifying ideas and concepts. It was still just a beautiful thing to immerse myself into. I really enjoyed this one. I'm not a huge fan of reading um, like dystopian futuristic stuff right now, especially in the last two years, just because it makes me nervous for our future that I have the anxiety attacks. Not usually a good time for me, but in this case I really enjoyed it because it was kind of an interesting take. It was very fantastical as well. There was a lot of whimsy to it. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this one and I gave it a 3.5 stars. After that I read The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the second book in the Eldest Curses series. I am so mad at Cassandra Clare for consistently sucking me back into her world. I want to be done with this series. Like I know that I will never actually stop reading her books. I will read every book that comes out in this world because I've dedicated so much time and energy and money into this series. Like this entire, from where is it? From here all the way down is all Cassandra Clare on my shelf. So I will keep reading them just so I don't feel like I've wasted my money. But like for a couple of years there I was not enjoying her books whatsoever. I just thought they were all just carbon copies, just recycled storylines and characters, which they are. But the last couple I've actually really enjoyed and this is one of them. The Eldest Curse series is not like the best series ever, but it's different from like her core series because it's following different characters. This series follows Magnus and Alec and it's just kind of their life together and all the adventures and bullshit that they're dealing with in their lives together. And Magnus is my favorite character in the series. Yeah, I think he's just so much fun. He's interesting. He's not just a carbon copy of every other character in this goddamn series. And I really love his relationship with Alec. I think it's so sweet and beautiful and I just really enjoy it. So I actually like this series a little bit. It's still a three star series for me. I gave this book three stars, which is not a bad rating. It's not like fantastic, but I'm still actually really enjoying it. And I'm kind of looking forward to carrying on with the series. I think book three is coming out later on this year. I'm not sure when, but like soon. And I'm actually kind of anticipating it. Also too, this is just a side note, I did not know that this was a reverse dust jacket. I've had, one moment, I've had this, this dust jacket on my shelves for two years almost, a year and a half, whenever this book came out, which does not match the first book. Like the colors match it, but the spine didn't match it. And it was driving me fucking crazy. I had no idea that there is a reverse dust jacket on the other side and and like this actually matches the layout of the first book. I had no idea that that was there and I'm so mad about it because I just had the wrong cover on my book for so long and like this is and like this one is so much nicer too. But anyways, that's irrelevant. I was just annoyed. <laughs> Next up, I read Princess Princess Ever After by Kay O'Neill. This is the author of The Tea Dragon Society, which is one of my favorite graphic novel series ever. It's so cute and so sweet. So I really want to read more from this author and see what else they've put out. So I grabbed this one from my library recently um, and it was fine. I found that it was way too quick. It's like a really typical kind of like medieval fantasy story, except with a like sapphic twist to it. So a knight like saves a princess from a tower, they fall in love. Like I, I liked how it was changed a little bit because like it's sapphic as well as the princess is plus sized as well. So that was really nice but there just wasn't enough substance to it to make it like a good story. It was fine. It was still fun and like a good time, but it was just really quick and like it was too much humor, not enough like actual story. It just didn't really have a lot to it, you know? There was very little dialogue to it. There was like no world building, no character development. It was just like a really quick like, here's the plot. Okay, we're done. Bye. And I'm just like, that's not really what I wanted, but that's okay. It was still fun. And to this one, I gave three stars. After that one, I read When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nevo. This is the second book in the Singing Hill Cycle series, which follows our main character who is a cleric of some kind. They're like a storyteller. So they travel around wherever they're from and they write down the stories to bring back and to like, properly document. So it's a really interesting series. This is really like not plot driven at all, pretty much. It's like literally just this person sitting down and listening to somebody else tell them a story. Honestly, like the first book and the second book, I don't really know what happens in the stories. Like if you ask me to tell you the plot, I couldn't. I could not tell you what happens in these books at all. 
but the writing is so beautiful and so immersive that I love just getting lost in them. They're very short too, like it, I, I think the audiobook on Double Speed was about an hour and a half, so it's just really nice to just like sit down and just get lost in this beautifully immersive writing and just like feel the story unfold even if I have no idea what's happening. It's very atmospheric. It's a beautiful experience even if I really don't know what's happening in them. I'm not really upset about that to be honest. I just really enjoy the series over audio and just being able to listen to a beautifully told story. And this one I gave 3.5 stars. Next up I read Not Your Villain by C.B. Lee. This is book two in the Psychic Squad series. This is a sci-fi series that takes place way in the future after World War III uh, kind of destroyed the world. But after all of the nuclear stuff from the war people started being born with superpowers. And so in this series it follows a group of teenage friends as they uncover some kind of like superhero government conspiracy theory and try and solve that themselves as children. Because <laughs> you know that's what kids do obviously. But regardless this series is a lot of fun. Um, it's not like the best thing that I've ever read in my life but it is still a good time. It's just very light and quick and like I feel like it's not meant to be taken that seriously. Like the stakes are not that high. But it's a really fun series. It's also very diverse too. And yeah it's just it's fun. It's is nothing like groundbreaking but I still really enjoy it and I can't wait to carry on with the series. I think book four is coming out in June I want to say so I have a little bit of time to read book three still so hopefully I'll be able to get to that one pretty soon and this one I gave three stars. I then read Falling into Rarohenga by Steph Matsuku. This one is a middle grade about these two twins who do not get along at all and one day they go home from school and find that their mother has been dragged into the Maori underworld and they have to go after her and try and save her. So if you watch my channel you're probably well aware that I am obsessed with mythology. I love reading mythology from different cultures. I've been into mythology since I was a very small child and I've always been obsessed with any kind of mythology from like Hawaii and Polynesia, just, just any kind of like Pacific Island mythology has always been my favorite and especially Maori. I'm really not sure why Maori mythology in particular but I fucking love it. I just I don't know why I'm just obsessed with it. I have been for years so when I found this book I had to read it immediately and it did not disappoint. I had a great time with it. I did give it 3.5 stars but that was really to do with the plot and the characters. This one is a middle grade so I tried not to fault it too much but like as an adult reading this one I just found the bickering between the sibling characters to be so annoying. Like I also have a brother, I understand we did not get along as kids whatsoever, so like it is a pretty accurate depiction of a sibling behavior, but I found that the bickering like really took away from the story for me because it was just really annoying honestly. <laughs> but the setting and the atmosphere was just so so good. It did take me quite a while to read this book though because like every time that they would mention like oh you know we just saw like this one spirit who's from this myth I would have to stop reading and go look up the myth. I was honestly having such a good time reading this. I learned so much. I ended up in so many like google rabbit holes of just looking into all the myths and creatures and stuff that they were seeing and talking about in the book. Um, it was a blast reading this one. I had such a good time with it and I really want to read more from this author and just see if I can find more like Maori mythology fantasy books that are out there. Um, so if you know of any others please let me know. I will love you forever if you give me more of these. But yeah so 3.5 for this one. Had a great time. Please read this book. It is so good. <laughs> these next two books were both from the same series and those ones were The Hidden Witch and The Midwinter Witch by Molly Ostertag. These are books two and three in the Witch Boy graphic novel series. This series is a lot of fun. It is a witch and like shifter kind of thing. It follows a young kid who comes from a family where they all have magic but in their family the magic is for the women and the men are all shifters. But our main character is a boy but he does not want to shift. He wants to be a witch and he's dealing with a whole lot of prejudice against that and people who just don't accept him. And that's kind of the gist of the series. I won't go into details of books two and three because it would spoil book one. I think I gave all three books four stars. Book one I read a few months ago but I just finished up the series now. And yeah they're just a lot of fun. It's really sweet. I love the whole like found family element to it. The main character makes friends with some people who like aren't part of his like witch family and they're just like so accepting and loving and I love kind of seeing the character development between his family. I love all of the family relationship as well. It was just a really beautiful story and yeah I just really enjoyed the series. So four stars for both of these ones. After those two I read Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I finally read that guys. <laughs> this one was on my list for my I finally read that series uh, which I started doing like almost two years ago 
ago and like have barely touched. So I'm glad that I was finally able to pick this one up. I have been dying to read it forever because so many people love this book and I can and I can definitely see why. This one is a fairy tale type of fantasy story that takes place uh, in like a fantasy version of Poland and it follows our main character who is from this very small village on the edge of this wood that is like full of this dark corruption that is like slowly spreading and taking over the world basically. So there is a wizard living in the tower nearby that's keeping the corruption at bay and every 10 years he comes to the village and picks out a girl. He keeps her for 10 years, nobody knows what's happening behind those walls. But once the girl is set free she ends up never coming back home. She ends up like going into the city and like going to university doing whatever she does but they like never see them again basically. So in this one our main character is the girl who was chosen of course. So off she goes to the tower where she learns that she actually has magic as well and the wizard has to train her. This is not at all what I thought it was going to be. Normally when I hear people talk about this book they always talk about the romance in it so I thought that it was going to be like very romance forward. It was not. <laughs> there was the romance in there still, but it was not at all like, like the main focus of it whatsoever, which is fine. I still really enjoyed it. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. After I kind of like realized where I was going and changed my expectations, I was really enjoying this one, especially the last like 30% or so were just wonderful. The last little bit of this one really reminded me of um, the Green Hollow duology by Emily Tesh, which I read a few months ago. I obviously won't spoil it, but like I just really, really loved the last little bit of this book so much. I think before that it was going to be more like a 3, 3.5 stars. Like it was good, but it was like not quite what I hoped it was going to be. But then that last chunk was just so good and like right up my alley and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It was fantastic. I cannot wait to get to more from this author. I, I really want to read, um, what's it called? Spinning Silver next. It just seemed like the perfect like wintry read. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to get to it sometime soon. But yeah, this writing is beautiful. The world building was incredible. The atmosphere, everything was just so stunningly written and they gave it four stars. I then read A Veil of Truth and Trickery by Annalie Ford. This one is a fairy book that uh, my friend Roxanne over at Roxanne Can Read found on TikTok and apparently it's like a Sarah J Mass kind of ripoff. It's available on Kindle Unlimited so Roxanne asked me to read it and review it to let her know if it was worth it and I actually really liked it. It follows our main character who is born from the human world but she is fairy marked. She has like silver hair and black eyes and as a result she's been treated horribly her entire life. She's just been abused and just treated like garbage bump from everybody. She and everybody knows that at some point during her life the Fae are going to come and collect her to finally cash in on whatever deal whoever it was made that left her being fairy marked. And that's exactly what happens. So one of the fairy princes comes and takes her to the fairy realm and then we quickly learn why they need her. Uh, I won't go into details obviously because that would be spoilers. But they need her for a very specific reason. But this one is a new adult series and it does have some spicier scenes in it. It was advertised as being a reverse harem like polyamorous kind of thing. It's also the like traveling trope which I love. Most of this book is the main character and the four fairy princes traveling between the courts. It was self-published so it does have like quite a few types in there and like I feel like it definitely could have benefited from having a like actual editor. There was a lot of like repetitive word choices and like plot things that were just a little bit too convenient or like things that could have been developed better but overall I still actually really liked this one. The sequel is coming out I think at the end of February so I'm looking forward to reading that one and I hopefully get to it pretty shortly and I gave it a solid three stars. Second from last. We're almost there guys. <laughs> this one is always my most anticipated read of the entire year and that is of course the newest installment in the Wayward Children series Where the Drown Girls Go by Shauna McGuire. If you have been around for any length of time on my channel, you have heard me talk this series to death. I talk about it all the time. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. This one is a portal fantasy series that takes place at a school for children who had at some point in their lives found a door that took them to a different world. And in this world, they were so happy they found their home. And then for some reason, they were forced out of that world and back into our world. And now they're miserable. So the school is for kids who are trying to like adjust back to like life in our world while still waiting for their doors to open again and, and take them back home. Except in this book we follow Cora, who was a character from I think it was the third book I want to say, the third and the fifth book. And as a result of some things that happen in book five that I won't go into because of spoilers, she wants to forget those things that happen and so she asks to be transferred to the other school which is for kids who did not have a good time in their fantasy world and they want to kind of reintegrate back into our world. So she goes there and things are not what they seem. It is very dark and menacing and then 
our story goes from there. This is definitely one of the strongest books in this series. It was such a good time. I loved seeing the other school and kind of how things were run there and all of the dark sinister things that were happening in the background. Just thoroughly enjoyed it. I read it in one sitting. I could not put it out. It's very short too and I just loved every second of it and I gave it a solid four stars. Now at this point in the month I had one day left in January and I was at like 2,850 pages that I'd read and I was just determined to get to 3,000 pages and so I picked up volume two of Love Me For Who I Am by Kata Konayama. This is a manga series about a student in high school who is non-binary and their friend assumes that they're just somebody who likes to cross-dress so he invites them to come work at their maid cafe for boys who dress like girls. And it's about this kid finding family among these people at the maid cafe as well as teaching them about what it means to be non-binary and that, you know, they're not actually a boy in a girl's clothing. They are a genderless person. It's not like my favorite thing ever. I find the plot to be pretty typical. Like there's no surprises whatsoever, but it is very lighthearted and fun and just a good time. And this one I gave three stars. And that is it. Those are the 13 books that I read in January. I have been filming for so long. My feet hurt from standing here. I'm gonna go sit down. I'm so tired. <laughs> But let me know your favorite thing that you read in January or if you've read any of these books. I would love to hear your thoughts on them. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!